How's going guys? Welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto return as the true king in 7 deadly sins, part 2. If you want to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Outside the building he was sent out of, Meliodas was on the ground, and slowly getting up from the hit, he took being very strong. Who was she Meliodas' train of thought was silenced when he watched the girl jump out the window, landing directly in front of the sin, who held his broken sword tightly, but was somewhat surprised seeing the pure anger within her very eyes. Mind telling, who exactly you are, and why you tried attacking Elizabeth, also who was the one to order you. Hearing that, Mash just stayed in a fighting stance. I am a knight to the round. When Meliodas heard that, his eyes slowly widened all the way. Wait, that means he was cut off by a wall of magic appearing in front of him as well as behind, followed by the buildings on his left and right were also covered in magic to trap him in a box. When he sensed a spike in magic, he turns fast to see Mash holding her shield that was covered in her magic right before throwing it full force at Meliodas, who moves his head to the right in order to dodge it yet realized where he was right before turning fast and blocked the shield with his weapon yet, instead of being stopped it bounces off into the wall before back at him. In mere seconds it was bouncing everywhere with great speed as well as force, leaving cuts on Meliodas' body and soon enough slashes. The moment it tries to hit him in the back, he turns fast and catches it with both of his hands and sword and mouth. He was forced to skid back until he hit the wall, but in turn successfully stopped the shield. Immediately the shield vanishes and turns to see Mash charging at him full speed with a part of the barrier she hit momentarily disappearing, so she could ram into Meliodas to send him hard into the other end with the barrier once again fully enacted, trapping the two inside it. You're also from 3,000 years ago, Meliodas said to the girl who was glaring at him. Shut up. She shouted with anger as she charged right at him which Meliodas standing up straight, but he wasn't fast enough and received a direct kick to he face that sent him crashing into the wall hard and slides down against it while making eye contact with the pissed off girl. I'll end you first before the goddess four. She said all the while Meliodas having already figured out what it is she's so pissed about due to her most likely being from 3,000 years ago, but doesn't let those thoughts of the past get in the way before standing up straight. Completely serious due to feeling her magic power being greater than his own right now. Seeing him now serious, Mash prepared her next attack by focusing her magic into her shield. Not a moment later she threw her shield full force at the sin yet, the spin was so strong it was pulling Meliodas towards it as if it were a hurricane yet was caught barehanded by the sin of wrath. Seeing this, Mash's eyes only narrowed since the captain of the seven deadly sins now had a black marking on his forehead, scara of his eyes pitch black, and more markings on the tips of his fingers. She spoke again, but with a tone with confirmation. So, you're indeed him, the oldest son of the demon king himself, ex-leader of the Ten Commandments, Meliodas. Hearing that, Meliodas' eyes merely narrowed since he only knew of one other that knew his identity. So, you are from back then too, huh? A member of Camelot and of the Knights of the Round that served the king. While saying that, the girl extended her hand which the shield flew right back to her which she catches it. Enough talk you accursed demon. Hearing that, Meliodas didn't deactivate the demon markings as well as black flames covered his broken sword. Knowing full well that he will die if he does not go all out against a girl who is stronger than that of the last great holy knights and current great holy knights. While this went on, away from them was Diane who was searching for the location of Ban before feeling Meliodas' magic power. She was on her way, hurrying towards him in the middle of the town, that was until she felt a spoke of magic power behind her causing her to stop and turn slowly where she saw a cloaked figure. That figure confused her greatly at how the person remained calm in the presence of a giant, but that confusion ended when she saw that spear. The spear looked like any other spear, except for the fact the spearhead was curved, jagger, and glowing crimson red. 
seeing the glow it have off, her entire being froze, just as she heard a familiar voice that struck a deep hatred and sadness in her heart. Well, isn't this a surprise? I didn't expect to see you of all people here, he was silenced by the girl who swung her fist full force at the man who simply smiled before bringing up his spear and blocks her strong punch with the ground cracking under his feet. The man from under his cloak revealed to be wearing Greek armor with light green hair and a spear in hand. Wow, you may have your her looks but the temper, spoke the smiling man who was making eye contact with the pissed off giant. Achilles, Knight of the Round Table slash Magic 1206, Strength 2109, Spirit 1500, Total 4815. Why? Spoke the wide eyed Dian who was staring at the completely unharmed Achilles. Are you here? She questioned the man who simply smiles. It has indeed been a long time, but he was silenced by the girl who was using heavy metal that increased the density of her skin just before slamming down her right fist on the man, causing a large crater that damaged the buildings around them and scaring the citizens in them as well as around them. The giantess just grits her teeth as her fist was slowly moved up, revealing an unheard hero who was using a single hand. You still got a lot to learn, child, as well as you can't use creation in a place like this where there's many buildings and innocent people within them. So let's see how much you've grown. With those words, he can clearly see her anger before she swung down her second fist yet, after pushing the first one back he jumps up onto the second incoming fist. Running up her arm right towards her before delivering a roundhouse kick, that forced her into the side of a building with Achilles landing on the ground with a smile, and his left hand showing a bring it on hand motion. That all you got? He questions the giantess who glares at the man. While this was happening, something else was taking place it within Naruto's mind. Back within Naruto's mindscape. Where the fuck am I? Spoke a very confused Naruto, who was standing in front of a gigantic pair of doors. They were made completely of bones, with two large skeletal human torsos, as well as heads. Naruto just stood there, staring up at the doors, until he felt a pulse within him just as the doors began to creak open to reveal a blinding light that caused Naruto to squint his eyes at the light yet couldn't help but approach and walk through it. The moment he did so the light immediately dims down, but much brighter than the sewer system he was in. What he was met with was something that was unlike anything of this world. Inside, he was met with an all-white room that appears to be nothing but space, no walls, no floors, no ceilings. Just a large table filled with pieces of paper, and behind it were two large doors, one being demonic while the other heavenly. The one who sat at the desk was a bipedal humanoid with a horned skull in place of a face, and with glowing red in the sockets of his eyes. He is much taller than a human, with the average human reaching to his chest. His neck is the only part that shows skin, of which is purple in color. He wears a three-piece suit, a black suit jacket that flows to his knees with long embroidered sleeves, paired with a blue vest and white undershirt. A black stone BLO necktie tucks just beneath his collar. Naruto was very confused before he felt a force that ushered him inside just before the doors closed behind him, which he turns fast to see they were indeed closed right before turning back, and the moment he did so, he felt his entire being froze. The skeleton-looking monster was staring right at him, and with that stare it gave off an aura unlike no other. Want to take a seat? When it said that, Naruto was snapped out of his shock to see a seat appear behind him just as he is forced to sit down by an unknown pressure. Who, who are you? Naruto asked with beads of sweat falling from his face from still feeling the power radiating from the skeleton. The answer he was given caused him to be free and forget all about the pressure. From what you humans call me, I am the one who comes for souls, the one who reaps what has fallen, the one that harvests the dead. I go by many names Maclantacutli, Tlalek, Zyptotek, Zolithl, Nurgle, Batara Kala, Sadapa, Anubis, Osiris, Thanatos as he continued saying all those names. He was reading off a list that caused Naruto to feel somewhat annoyed at this due to it going on for some time, 
when he was having trouble pronouncing said names, as well as his deep voice somehow made it less uncomfortable. But you can call me Sir Death, Lord Death, or Great Lord Death Sama. When he said that, Naruto could clearly tell, despite his aura, presence, and deep voice, he was acting lighthearted in a playful way yet the redhead didn't demand answers or speak out. Not wanting to take the chance of pissing off the being that could very well be the actual death god, the Grim Reaper. Now, tell me, why have you come here Naruto? When he said his name, Naruto's eyes widened by his words right before death noticed what was wrong and immediately, everything that was causing him trouble had vanished and watched death extended his hand. Speak freely. Hearing that, Naruto spoke almost immediately. Where am I? He shouted at the death god who looks around. Within your mind? Well, as of right now you're in limbo. When he heard that, Naruto showed a look of disbelief and stood up while looking at the door. I'm dead? He shouted, his thoughts shifting over to Elizabeth as well as the others including the kingdom before he heard death speak. No, you entered limbo of your own accord. You're not dead, though as of right now, as long as you are within this room, you cannot regain consciousness either, and could be thought of as dead. Hearing that, Naruto just looks back at the door. Then can you open the door so I can leave? When he asked that, death just stares at him in silence before it spoke with its hands moving under its chin. Before that, tell me, what do you last remember? When Naruto heard that, he just looks back with great confusion at the death god. Why do you ask? He questioned the being who simply stares at him. Just curious is all, child. Tell me, what do you last remember of the last when you were found? Hearing that, after a few seconds he finally spoke. It's not that I remember, what I was told was that I was one day found in a forest by my adopted father. Hearing that, death just stares at him. I see, so you really do not remember. When it said that, the tattoo on Naruto's stomach glows which death's eyes reveal a glowing red dot. Interesting, so your memories are truly sealed and split into what could be seen as three parts. When he heard that, Naruto showed great confusion at what he just heard. What? What do you mean by sealed and split? He was silenced by the doors behind him suddenly opening up widely to reveal a blinding light that Naruto turns towards, and could find himself being dragged towards it, unable to stop before looking back at death. We will meet again. When we do I will give you something. Once that was said, the door shuts with Naruto no longer in the room, and leaving the supreme being by itself. I wonder who created that seal. HMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMM
Not a moment later, the window in front of her broke more, causing her to look up just as Mash flies past her, landing behind the girl and Pig who both turn around in shock. Mash had her shield was drawn back, just as the captain of the Seven Deadly Sins was seen also about to enter through the window, when a shield flew past Elizabeth's head, cutting her cheek and slamming into the Sin's stomach with great speed to force him back all the while the knight got ready to charge for the princess, intent to break her neck with her bare hands. While this was happening, Meliodas was having trouble holding back his anger at the thought of the princess being killed. The moment he lands on the ground the attack was already beginning which was Mash charging directly at the princess. Meliodas couldn't get there fast enough due to his injuries and still in mid-jump. While this was happening, the princess felt great fear for her life and shouted only one name that came to mind. Naruto. The moment that name was called, the Sin had finally made it to the window. Finding that Mash's right hand was grabbed by none other than Naruto, who was sat up quickly, sitting on the side of his bed, and was facing the assassin with his left hand wrapped around the princess, so she could lean closely into her savior, who was wide awake. Seeing him awake, Mash smiles, hopefully, when she met Naruto's gaze, but that all ends when she was slammed back to reality by the man who let go of her hand in order to use his now free hand to deliver a devastating right uppercut that sent her a couple of feet into the air before delivering another devastating strike to her stomach. Breaking many of her ribs at the strike, she was never prepared for and flew right through the wall next to the open door. The moment she hit it, she coughs out blood and slides down against the wall while looking up in disbelief before once again gritting her teeth. She quickly gets up before dashing down the steps of the building in a hurry to get out of here as well as retrieve her shield. With her running away, Naruto took this chance to let go of the princess before standing straight. I must have been out again. For some tea he stops there to see the tearful princess. Seeing the expression she made, he quickly goes down on one knee, kneeling to her with his left fist on the floor with his head bowed in utter shame. I'm sorry for worrying you yet again, my lady. I guess I am still a sorry excuse for a holy night when it comes to worrying you. Hearing that, she just wipes her tears away while he stood up straight before suddenly being hugged by the princess with her arms wrapping around his neck, surprising the young man at the display of affection for her savior as well as joy for his recovery. I'm just glad you're back, but please be more careful. Hearing that, he simply wraps his arms around her and holds her closely. As you wish, I will never do something like that ever again. Hearing that, she felt happiness from his words that were spoken. Watching the scene was Meliodas, who finally spoke with a chibi-like expression upon his face. Susu, you guys done yet? The moment they heard that, both let go with Naruto having a bright red face while Elizabeth was stuttering. That was when Naruto noticed something and tore off the wrappings to reveal his body, not having a single wound okay him, and ever the scar he thought he had was missing. Not even a scratch is left, spoke the confused man who didn't understand how he was already healed, merely standing at himself with Elizabeth also amazed. Seeing this, the Sin of Wrath turns his back to the two. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta capture that knight, spoke the sudden words of Meliodas, who didn't wait for a reply and left the room through the window in a hurry. So you back at full strength, tomato? Hearing that, Naruto turns to see the lively hawk standing behind him. Wait, you were in this room? I didn't even notice you. Hearing that, the pig shed anime tears due to practically just standing still as he watched the scene unfold. While this was happening, Meliodas was running down the street with a somewhat depressed expression upon his face as his thoughts went back to Elizabeth hugging Naruto. While this was happening, away from them was the other sin. A battle had finally finished. Seems you still lack enough training, spoke the disappointed Achilles, who stood atop of the unconscious Diane's head, having knocked her out with her having minimum injuries. Instead of furthering the injuries, he just jumps off of her and lands on the ground before looking back at her. Slowly, he showed a somewhat happy smile 
while he places his left hand on her forehead and rubs it. I'm sorry for roughing you up. After saying that, he turns away from her, looking at the arrival of Mesh. We must retreat, spoke the injured knight, and behind her, another could be since giving chase. Achilles wasted no time whistling with two fingers in his mouth, causing the sky above them to light up even more, as a three-horse chariot comes down by a light green aura like energy coming off of it. The moment it was close enough, the two jump on, with Achilles grabbing the reins on the driver's stand just as Meliodas made it to them, to see Achilles giving him a wave of his hand. See ya? Achilles said with a wave to Meliodas just before they took off towards the sky like a comet. The sin of wrath just stood there, watching them escape into the far distance. Only an hour later were the two inside a dark cave, near the entrance where it was dark out and that it was storming. So, you let your guard down and got hit full strength in the stomach. Well, weren't you just foolish, huh? Spoke the man who was leaning against the wall, making eye contact with the angered girl. Spoken by the man who could have finished off the sin of envy, because you just toyed with her, she's still alive. Hearing that, the man showed slight annoyance as they glared at each other, until a bolt of lightning could be seen at the entrance, creating light which a figure could be seen standing there. The two turned fast in surprise at who it was until they saw the person. So you two have indeed failed. When they heard that, the two froze at recognizing the man fully. He was dressed in a royal fashion, appearing as black as a shadow in the night, contrasted with his pale face and long silk-like white hair. Seeing him, Achilles spoke with shock. Glad, when did you Achilles was silenced by his cold gaze? Your mission was the capture of Narada without notice. Mash, you let your anger get in the way of the mission and Achilles, you let your past be the main priority. Hearing that, the man just looks away while the girl tried speaking but stops and looks at her feet before she closed her eyes. Come on kid, at your age I was very lively, so why not smile and have some fun when you're not fighting out there? Remembering those words, she couldn't help but grit her teeth in anger as those words led to sad and painful memories. Soon enough, she looks up in anger and spoke. But what about Mash was silenced by the terrifying aura the one before her gave off? Do not talk back, she has ordered you back, and do not think you can somehow get out of your punishment. Your father always had your back, but he's gone like the others. Do not accept you will receive a weak punishment. Hearing that, Mash could only look down fearfully. Seeing this, Achilles simply sweats at what he was seeing, only able to look away. How I miss the old days, unlike the original knights of honor and valor, we are a sorry excuse for an order of knights, thought Achilles, knowing that they may not be the originals, but they are indeed stronger. He watched as Vlad turned his back to them, and starts walking away, and out of the cave where stood a short person wearing a black cloak. Prince, we are leaving now. Hearing that, the one under the cloak removes the hood to reveal a young teen with burning red hair. Come on, Vlad, no need to address me like that. After all, weren't you king yourself before our hibernation? He asked the king who glances at the teen, giving him a cold glare. Alexander, you should do well in not speaking of my past. Hearing that, the kid only smiles, as he gives a nod of understanding which Vlad proceeded to walk away, which Alexander follows happily. So, they were trying to kill Lady Elizabeth? Spoke the very shocked Naruto who sat on the bed, staring at Meliodas who stood in front of him, Elizabeth, Hawk, and Diane who sat outside awake, yet she had a lost expression on her face. Naruto just looks down in shame at how he almost failed to save the princess yet again. They retreated for now, from the looks you're back up so now we can go find Ban. He's currently held up in base dungeon, which is close to here. Hearing that, Naruto didn't really react but think about what has transpired within his mind, those two beings, the mysterious voice, and meeting death itself. Yet what bothered him was the images that traveled through his mind. It's all his fault. If IT weren't for that him, we would have had her. Kill him. He stole her from U.S. 
he has been nothing but a curse for us. After remembering those words, his head throbbed with the seal on his stomach burning a little, and just placed a hand on his chest. You okay, tomato? You look sick? Hearing that, he just looks up with surprise at the confused hawk which worried Elizabeth, while Meliodas just looks at Naruto, and clearly saw him put up a fake smile. I was sleeping for a while, so I'm just not yet fully awake. But it's okay, let's just hurry up and get the sin of grief ban. Once said he stood up in front of them all before he walks towards the door, with the others soon following behind. In a matter of minutes, Naruto, Meliodas, Elizabeth, Diane, and Hawk were crossing over the bridge towards the dungeon, but during the time they left the building, Diane seemed to be depressed. Hey Diane, something wrong? Questioned the Sin of Wrath, who surprised the giantess, yet she shows a fake smile. Nothing at all, just a bit sad, I wasn't much help in the battle. She told the Sin honestly, yet still showed sadness for some reason that she wasn't explaining. Suddenly a ring was heard that very much surprised Naruto, who looked around at where they came from, but can't tell where it was. There's a holy knight, here. When Diane shouted that, he looks up to see that she was looking down at them in anger. What's she talking about? He was stopped there by her mentioning them, but were forced to jump away with Naruto picking up Elizabeth and Meliodas' hawk in order to dodge the kick. What the heck's gotten into you, Diane? Just after asking that, Elizabeth tries speaking to her yet doesn't hear her. I'm warning you, here and now, that I'm not gonna lose again. Just after saying that, Meliodas noticed her eyes. Something's changed about her eyes. Hearing that, Naruto follows his gaze and also noticed that they changed. What do we do now? Once asked, not a moment later he realized he wasn't holding he princess anymore and looks to see the sin running away with her in his arms. We run, spoke the retreating sin, and caused Naruto to sweat drop, but when he turns around he saw Diane raising her right foot before he grabs Hawk and runs after the princess and the sin of wrath. You could have just shouted run and not ditch us. Naruto shouted at the leader of the group, glancing back at the sin of envy hot on their tail. One by one, they dodged attack after attack and with those attacks, explosions were made. The group soon enough found themselves running down a hill, away from the rampaging giantess. Meliodas was the first to notice that up ahead was A.A. Father and his son on a walk. Oh crap! Bystanders! shouted the pig with Meliodas shooting at the two to run, which they indeed did. After minutes on end, they finally secured a hiding spout from Diane within a trench. Please help, spoke the tearful man, sitting next to Naruto was was next to Elizabeth, Meliodas who was holding the kid, and Hawk. She's gone nuts, that's for sure. Look after this kid for a sec, okay? Spoke the sin who hands the crying child to Elizabeth. What were the two of you doing out here? She questioned the tearful child with a gentle tone. We're shepherds, on our way back from the pasture. Please, I don't want anything bad to happen. When Naruto heard the child say that, for some reason, he got this odd feeling in his gut that the kid was lying. Don't worry, everything will be okay. He can fix this. Spoke the princess, who watched as the sin of wrath stands before Diane, but suddenly spoke in confusion. Hey, big guy. Was it you who cast that weird spell on Diane? Hearing that, Naruto's eyes widened in realization at him also falling under the same spell as Diane. Without a moment sooner, the two start to clash with one another. This is hard to believe, but Meliodas is caught in the same spell as Diane right now. Spoke Mr. Porky just before they ran like hell from the soon-to-be wave of rising rock pillars heading their way. Naruto was holding Elizabeth with his right arm while his left the kid. By the time they stopped, the group was already far enough from the battle that was taking place. This doesn't look good, if it continues then one of them will. He stops there and glances at the princess to see she was very worried, but that was when Naruto heard it again, a ring sound vibrating through the air which his gaze shifts over to the kid's staff, on it was a bell. 
a kid. Hearing that, said Boyd looks at the serious gaze of Naruto. Mind letting me see that staff of yours? When he asks that, the kid faces him while gripping the staff. I'm sorry, but this was the last thing I was given by my mother. I don't want anyone to touch it. Hearing that, Naruto's eyes merely narrow. I wasn't asking to be denied. Give me the staff right now. He said in a more assertive tone, but the kid merely shows tears before hiding behind Elizabeth, who looks at Naruto seriously. Naruto, why are you? She was cut off by Naruto speaking yet again with no kindness. Elizabeth, get away from him right now. Naruto shouted at her, causing said girl to flinch just before the two noticed a large black cloud heading towards the group. That's a large swarm of huge poisonous insects. Hawk shouts in shock and not a moment sooner the redhead dashes over Elizabeth, quickly skidding to a stop right as his left palm slams into the kid's stomach, sending the boy rolling away from the group and shocking the princess at the cruelty of Naruto. Naruto was about to defend them, when all of a sudden Elizabeth starts to run towards the kid, but was stopped by Naruto grabbing her by her arm. Elizabeth, will you? He was cut off by the girl, who looks at him tearfully with anger. Can't you even see what you're doing? You're acting just like those holy knights that took over the kingdom. With those words, she caused Naruto to mentally freeze as his pride was hurt. With that moment of hesitation, the princess pulled away from Naruto so she could immediately run towards the kid and hug him protectively. Taking aim was all the insects that let loose a barrage of acid outright for her. Wind Wall screamed Naruto just as a large wind barrier formed around the princess and the kid, protecting the two from the acid that was forcibly dispersed. By the time the wind wall disappeared, the two were completely fine much to the princess's happiness at seeing the kid was all right. Are you okay, lady? Elizabeth? When she heard that, the princess turned slowly to find Naruto on one knee with his left arm extended out towards her. He was hit by the acid attack in order to react fast enough to protect her. His shirt falls off, only pieces with his pants badly damaged. What seemed to have been hit mainly was his back that was damaged the most, steaming from the acid hitting it. Seeing this, the princess just stood there in disbelief as well as horror, thinking about the days that went by of Naruto protecting her and ending up bedridden and unconscious. You are a courageous princess yet also an incompetent one. Hearing that, Elizabeth turned slowly to be met with a holy knight ruin that took the place of the kid. Your protector, even if he is a failure of a holy knight apprentice, he still saw past my illusion. Even if you thought your actions were just, you're still too blamed for the condition you put him in. He could have left without a scratch if it weren't for your selfishness and needing to protect the weak. Spoke Ruin who was staring down at the princess, who just stares up at him in disbelief. So, if it weren't for me then, he wouldn't be in such a condition. If it weren't for me looking for the seven deadly sins, he wouldn't be put in such situations. It's all my fault. Remembering what she said, she felt truly helpless, and that even with Meliodas's words that had her take a step forward, seeing her selfishly not listen to Naruto had caused him to once again be her shield, causing her to feel like she took two steps back. She was snapped out of it by the holy knight who grabs her by the hair, lifting her up face to face. You could say your sin is using others as sacrifices for your own selfish desire. Ha! Huh. The sin of selfishness. He froze there at seeing Naruto was nowhere to be seen, and just as he noticed, something slammed into his right side with such force it sent him skipping on the ground with a princess falling until an arm wraps around her waist to stop her from falling. She has no sin for my well-being, because it's my duty to protect her, spoke the serious Naruto, who was staring at Ruin standing up. Impressive, but you still have a lot to learn. While he said that, behind him appears Golgius with his sword drawn up high with Elizabeth's eyes widening as she was about to say something when the moment the sword closed in on his back, it was caught instantly much to the shock of Golgius, who met the gaze of Naruto. In order to protect the princess from you three, 
I made her worry. With those words, the holy knight disappears, but couldn't jump back because Naruto's left hand was already wrapped around his neck, causing the invisibility to be released to reveal himself while surprising Ruin. Back off. With those words, he slammed his left foot directly into the holy knight's armored abdomen, gaining many cracks before he was sent flying back in a straight direction from the impact of the kick. Watching this scene was a shocked Ruin, who simply stares at Naruto in shock at the pure power of his kick before he lets go of Elizabeth and starts walking towards Ruin while he spoke. I'm sorry Lady Elizabeth for worrying you yet again. Apologized the teen whose back was facing Elizabeth, and slowly her eyes widened to see his back was still steaming but not from the acid, but the melted skin regenerating fast. But don't worry, I won't lose this fight but please. As he said that, he looks back at her with an innocent smile. Don't you ever, ever doubt yourself and your decisions you make because that is something I never want to see from you. Hearing those words, the princess's eyes just widened as she remembered what Meliota said. Besides, Naruto isn't dead and he'll continue getting stronger. I know for sure, Naruto will one day embody what it means to be a knight of honor and valor. As she thought that, Naruto glances over to Hawk who was standing on the sidelines. Watch over Elizabeth for me. He told the pig with his gaze then shifting over to Frisia. Don't even think about it. He told the knight who froze at the cold gaze, not being of any regular civilian. Seeing that his gaze was off him, Ruin took his chance to leap for Naruto with his staff brought up high in the air. He swung down full force yet was caught by one hand, causing a triple crater to form yet he stood his ground, much to his shock. Compared to Gil Thunder, you're far weaker than him. He told the shocked Holy Knight, who couldn't believe that this guy was kicked out from being a Holy Knight. Ruin goes for an uppercut with his right fist yet the protector just turns his body right while he moves to his left, getting on the right of Ruin in order to deliver his own fast uppercut to his chin. The impact sent him high into the air with blood leaking from his mouth, due to comping down on his own tongue and severing it before that hit dented his helmet until it slammed into his chin. He's fast, not only that, his thoughts were silenced when he looked a little down to see Naruto was directly in front of him in the air with his right fist pulled back, having dark green wind swirling around his arm. Typhoon. As he said it, he swung his, his fist full force at Ruin who brought up both of his arms, blocking he punch yet what came next was a massive wind blast, being consumed by a large typhoon of wind that sent him flying across the forested area and towards base prison with the wind being so strong that the bell on his staff was ripped off. With that attack it felt like a storm was taking place for everyone nearby. The trees, grass, rocks, and water were all being pulled towards the direction of the massive wind blast with Hawk screaming like a child next to a wide-eyed Elizabeth. Seeing this, Frisia just stood there dumbfounded at what she was hearing, until she heard cracks to find not only a pist of dying cracking her knuckles, but also an annoyed Meliodas. By the time Ruin stoked, he had made contact with the prison from having been launched directly into its wall with nearby soldiers just standing there in shock. This makes no sense, he was reported as being weaker than an apprentice Holy Knight's level, yet, he stops there at seeing a shadow blocking the sun off him and just looks up to meet Naruto's gaze. How is he this strong? Thought Ruin who stood up slowly, and immediately swung his staff full force into Naruto's head, resulting in said staff being broken in two, with Naruto's head receiving minimal damage, looking like he was slapped very hard. Naruto merely looks back at Ruin before he stretches his neck, gaining several cracks as it moves back into place. Ow! Naruto muttered, feeling less pain than the acid that hit his back. Naruto just pulls his arm back again, Seeing this, the Holy Knight moves his arms up to protect his face yet left his stomach wide open so that Naruto could send a single punch right into it. The moment it made contact, the abdomen area of the armor received many cracks before it started falling up, like a glued vase falling apart slowly. Impossible. How could you break my armor with a single blow? Well done, ex-apprentice. 
but I'm not done yet? Shouted the holy knight who flexes his abs that turn dark in color with all the broken pieces falling off from the sudden increase of muscle mass. This armor is no more than a thin outer shell. My flesh is my true armor, many times harder than still. Even if you become stronger than me, at your level you can't, he shouts victoriously, but couldn't finish since Naruto had hopped a few feet in the air to be at his height with his left arm drawn back. Yet your face isn't. While he said that, he swung full force right into the knight's helmet, denting it unbelievably bad, causing large amounts of blood to leak out from the helmet as he fell backwards, screaming in pain as he tries pulling the helmet off that been dented into his face, but it wouldn't come off. Watching this scene was a disappointed Naruto, who just stares down at him with nothing but disappointment. You dare touch Lady Elizabeth with your dirty hands and speak to her in such a foul way. As he said it, he approaches the holy knight raises his right hand. Mercy! Hearing that stopped Naruto, who just stares at the bleeding and beaten holy knight before turning his back to him. Seeing this his eyes widen, Immediately, he starts thanking him all the while reaching for his staff, and the moment he grabs it, he launches himself for Naruto with it raised, but in an instant the redhead turns around with his right hand being covered in magic before piercing through the abdomen of the holy knight whose eyes widen as more blood. Leaks out from his helmet. You asked for mercy yet, you attack me the moment I turn my back to you. Not only that but you dare grab the princess in such a way. You are not holy, nor any kind of true knight. With those words, he pulls his arm out of his abdomen, leading him to falling forwards and landing on Naruto's left. Watching this were the completely shocked soldiers who watch as Naruto starts walking away from the fallen knight. In a matter of minutes, Naruto had arrived to find both Frieza and Galgias unconscious and restrained. With them were Meliodas, Diane, and Elizabeth who were waiting for Naruto to return. You taking care of that holy knight? Questioned the leader of the seven deadly sins which he gives him a thumbs up. Relax, he received a severe punishment for not being a true knight. He told the group before looking back at the prison. The sin of greed, Ban is in there. I will take Elizabeth back while you two go on ahead. Once said the two were surprised but Meliodas just nods. Yeah, the prison could have more holy knights, so it's best you two return, we can handle the rest. Hearing that, Naruto just smokes before they heard a shout and turned to find a civilian being forced to walk towards them by Hawk. This guy is a soldier from Based, he knows where the sin is. Hearing that, the soldier tried to disagree but was met with the gaze of the three. Here's a question for you. Would you want to be beaten by holy knights or by the three of us who beat said knights? Questioned Diane who scared the shit out of the man before long Naruto was walking back with Elizabeth while Hawk led the way. During the walk the ex-apprentice has his hands behind his head, enjoying the peace and quote from the battle that had taken place. While they were walking, the princess was looking down at her feet. Can't you even see what you're doing? You're acting just like those holy knights that took over the kingdom. Remembering those harsh words she spoke to Naruto, she tried to speak but before she could he spoke instead. It's okay, you don't have to say anything. Once that was said, she immediately looks up at him in shock with Hawk looking back at the smiling Naruto. From where you were standing, it looked like I became a heartless person and tried harming a child. I should have explained more to you instead of through my actions in a situation like that, and for that. I'm sorry for scaring you. Hearing that, she just stares at him in shock due to wanting to apologize, but he did instead. But, she tried saying, only to be met with a hand in front of her face, which surprises her, but more at the fact he was speaking to her again by like a child. Nope, not gonna hear it. Already apologized to you so forget about it. Hearing that, Elizabeth stops with total disagreement of her face. But I insulted you. If I had only listened to my father, she was cut off by Naruto. Well, the situation was something he didn't expect so you listening to me was out of the question. Besides, I could have been controlled by the Holy Knight, who could have made me attack the kid, 
causing this entire thing to happen. Me being unprepared was what caused this, and you're not to blame. While he said that, he didn't really make sense of the completely obvious lie, and that lie caused the princess to puff her cheeks and pout as she gave Naruto a glare. We both know that's an obvious lie. She accused the ex-apprentice, who turns away with his hands behind his back. Watching this scene was a sweat-dropping hawk, who found their argument to be odd yet entertaining since this is the first time he's seen the princess disagreeing with someone non-stop. Don't know what you mean, all I'm. He was silenced by the base prison in the distance collapsing all of a sudden. Watching this scene was Naruto, whose jaw was dropped just like Hawk on his right. On his left was a once again shocked princess, who was sweating beads of sweat. Later that day, that very night at the boar hat. Ah, so that's what you did to old Ruin. Ah ha ha ha, gotta say that was pretty awesome. I heard a lot of commotion and crying about some redhead beating the shit out of one of the four holy knights. Shouted a very tall, muscular man with pale skin, who possesses a set of well-developed abdominal muscles. He has short, spiky, pale blue hair and thin black eyebrows, as well as a pair of scarlet red eyes. On the left side of his jaw and neck, he has a large scar. H.R. wore an outfit that he had stolen that very day, on their way towards the boar, he suddenly disappeared and reappeared with a stolen set of clothing. Currently at this moment, he was drinking alcohol next to a brightly smiling Naruto, who was scratching the back of his head sheepishly at the praise. Thanks, Naruto said with a smile to the sin of greed, who sat in the bar with him as well as Meliodas, Elizabeth, Hawk, and Diane who was outside. Without drinking another bottle, the sin of greed stood up slowly before facing the surprised princess, which he gives her a half bow. So you must be the princess I've been hearing about. Sorry for not introducing myself earlier, your highness. I wanted to enjoy myself for a bit after being jailed for so long. But let's all be friends, the five us. Spoke the sin of greed, but he was corrected at there being six. Are you out of it, captain? There are only five. Spoke the fox's sin. Um, no, there's six of us. Did you go insane for all those years, trapped in a dungeon? When he heard that, Ban's gaze slowly shifts down to the pig the moment he asked who spoke. I did, spoke Sir Hawk of Scraps, scaring the shit out of Ban. That pig is talking? He shouts while stumbling back, offending Hawk as he just found out now. Did I really go crazy in that dungeon? There's no way a pig can talk like a person. Wait, you're king, right? That must be it. You were cursed into being an actual pig. When he said that retarded answer, Diane could be heard outside face pacing herself. I heard that king's dead. Well, that's the rumor, anyway. Hearing that, Ban understood before looking back down at Sir Hawk. I'm warning you. I'm no ordinary pig. I'm Sir Hawk, captain of the order or scrap's disposal. When the pig said that, Naruto spits out his alcohol all over Meliodas from him unable to contain his laughter. Yet, instead of getting annoyed, the two just watched as Ban became amazed of Hawk's fake status. When Naruto's gaze shifts over to Elizabeth, he couldn't help but look away with his back facing them all, as he starts approaching the stairs where he begins walking up them. Watching this was Meliodas who soon enough follows him up the stairs where he lay in the guest room, staring at the ceiling on the bed. When he heard knocking at the door, he sits up to look at the open door where Meliodas stood. Yo, something wrong since you're not downstairs having fun? Questioned the captain of the sins, who saw the look on Naruto's face being depressed. It's not that I'm sick or anything, just realized something as well as remembered something. Hearing that, Meliodas was confused by what he means. You see, I thought about what you said that night involving Elizabeth. When he heard that, the sin of Wrath's eyes widened as he continued. The sudden question very much surprised me, but I didn't go deeper into my thoughts about that. That was until after hearing Elizabeth insult me. Sure, I've been called worse before, but that didn't really bother me, but when Elizabeth unsuited me, it wasn't some uncomfortable feeling but actual pain and hurt from my heart. Her words, 
To me, they cut deep, deeper than any blade I've ever felt. As I thought about her words causing me pain, I remembered what you said, and that was when I went into deep thought during my fight with Ruin. It was by then I came to the realization that, that you were right. When he said that, the captain of the sins looks away as he continued. Without really realizing it, I found out that I was madly in love with Lady Elizabeth. When I realized that, I felt a great anger boil inside me from his ruin treated her, causing me to show no mercy against him. After saying that, he sat up and not looking at the uncomfortable sin, but at his feet. What he said next caused Meliota's great shock. But my love for her, I know it can never happen. When those words were said, he immediately looks at him to see the look of a man who has made a decision despite what his heart wants. Not only have I made her worry for me nonstop, but I still fail in protecting her. If it weren't for you, she would have been killed twice. That is why I am truly unworthy of such a lady as Princess Elizabeth, spoke the depressed ex-apprentice, thinking of himself as unworthy for the princess. Hearing him say that, Meliodas just turns his back to Naruto as he remembered the words Mash spoke to him. Shut your mouth, you demon. It's because of you two our king had fallen. If I'd he weren't for the two of you, he would. You took away the one we all cared for and destroyed our home. I see. Well, I'm gonna see how the others are doing. Don't want Ban to drink all the booze. Once that was said, he walks out of the room while thinking of a single man. As he was walking down the steps, he was thinking about the past from thirty hundred years ago, and with those thoughts, a single man appeared in his mind. That man was a figure that created many legends for his valor and courage, and a part of his very name was inherited by the new king of Camelot. While he sat on his bed, unknown to them all a single person was watching them all from afar. She was in her late teens, with a slender physique and soft, white skin. She has finely textured golden hair that seems as if sprinkled with gold dust. She wore a tube top that exposes her abdomen and a crimson leather jacket. Her dark green eyes were fixated on the boar hat, but more so the one she was after inside. Currently sleeping was a snoring Naruto, who sat on a chair near Elizabeth's bed, while his head was bowed, arms crossed, and right leg on his left. Get up, you slackers! Time for breakfast, came the yell of Hawk, the princess, who was sleeping until now had finally woken up to be greeted by the sleeping Naruto. Just after seeing him, she recalled everything that happened while she stares at the knight, who starts to awaken from his slumber. Half hour later in the pub of the Boar Hat. Tell me, Meliodas, was sleeping with Lady Elizabeth necessary for her protection? Questioned the redhead, who sat on a chair opposite of the blonde while on his right and Meliodas's left was Elizabeth. What do you mean? There was an assassin trying to kill her so I decided to make sure to stay close in case another one attacks. Besides aren't you the one who was sleeping on the job? Hearing that caused him to blush while looking away. Heard you muttering ramen this and ramen that. Hearing that, furthered Naruto's embarrassment as he glared at the captain of the sins. Spoken by the pervy midget. Hearing that, Hawk finally spoke up after hearing that just as Naruto starts taking a drink. Tomato's right. Him lying in the same bed as you. He's going to get all gropy. Naruto I can trust in the same bed as you but not the perv. Just after saying that, Naruto did a spit take right on Meliodas, who had a blank look on his face since it's the second time that happened while Naruto was blushing and looks at Hawk immediately. Don't say it like that porky. Naruto shouts at the pig who turns to Naruto in anger. Who you calling Porky you overgrown tomato? With that said, the two had lightning between them, while Elizabeth just smiles, while she sweat yet a small blush appears on her face at what she heard about the two guys being in bed with her. Well, being tied up isn't so bad. Just think of it as foreplay. When Naruto heard Meliodas day that, he glared at the sin. What's foreplay? The princess asked, but what she got was the sin of wrath having his head through the floor again, and they had just started to get repaired with Naruto leaning over the table with his left arm extended. 
Do you just love getting on my bad side? Naruto shouts at Meliodas, who pulls his head out of the floor, and before he answers the sin of greed finally spoke after entering the room. I could sure use a drink. Spoke Ban just as he sat down at the table. Would you like some breakfast, Sir Ban? The princess asked the sin who denied it. You expect me to eat the captain's lousy cooking? He asked just before catching a bottle thrown by Meliodas, who was wiping off the dirt on his face. Actually, Hawk made it. Hearing that, Naruto's thoughts were back on the pig since not only did he tie up Meliodas, but he can also cook. Hearing the news even surprised Ban. What, really? He said. Not a moment sooner, he had taken Meliodas' seat and started eating since this must be good, and he was right. Hey, this is good? Better than your cooking, Captain. Hearing that, Meliodas just crosses his arms right before they proceeded with the mission and Meliodas places a map on the table. We're heading for the necropolis. We'll look for King there. He told a group of humans and Pig. Hold on, didn't you say that Fatty was dead? He questioned Meliodas, who spoke again. It's our only lead, so let's go check it out. He said to ban the undead. What sort of place is the necropolis? She questioned the sin of wrath who answers. I have no idea. All I've heard is that it exists. Hearing that, Hawk only states that he thinks it's haunted which scares Elizabeth. There, won't be any bugs, will there? Asked the scared Diane who finally spoke from the window. If King is really there, will he be alive? He asked Elizabeth, who covers her ears with fear, but the pig was silenced by Naruto bopping it in the head, leaving a big bump. Cool it, Hawk. He told the pig before noticing that Ban was sleeping. Few hours later. We're here, spoke the smoking Meliodas, who stood atop Mama Pig snout next to Hawk, Elizabeth, and Naruto with Diane on their right, and Ban behind them having just awoken. So this is the necropolis? The giant crybaby asked while she looked around the small run-down village. It looks abandoned. Naruto muttered while looking around yet he felt weird as they got closer. Rumor has it that this place is closed to the necropolis. We'll start by gathering intel on King and the necropolis. We also need money to feed ourselves. Okay, let's get ready for business. He told the group which Ben thought it was a joke at first. He's seriously cute when he's working, Diane said as she found him adorable. You guys are gonna work too, he said, pointing at them all. Diane, you start by attracting us some customers, Jumbo Billboard Girl, he said, much to the joy of Diane before pointing at Naruto, Hawk, and Ban. And you three start by cooking up some tasty grub. Hearing that, the three just look at each other. So, a pig, an ex-apprentice holy knight, and a criminal preparing food together. That seems odd. Are you sure this is? Naruto was cut off by Meliodas speaking without a care. Now to work. Put your backs into it, people, Meliodas said, not caring what he thinks. Please give me a job, too, Elizabeth asked the sin who just smiles. Okay, you can. He was cut off by Diane who grabs him, so she could hug him into her cheek. Oh, Captain, you made me the billboard girl. I'm so, so happy, she said gratefully at the decision he made and was reassured by her that he made a good choice. Oh, yeah, ban the pantry. He stops there just as they all noticed he was gone. That jerk. Hawk shouts just as Naruto looked off into the distance having this odd feeling as if they're being watched before he just heads inside with the others, but the moment he was about to enter, his body stopped his eyes narrowing as he felt killing intent somewhere out in the forest that surrounded them. If I can sense it, Meliodas must also know as well. He thought just before he walks inside the bar, with the door closing behind him. Far out on a tree branch sat an armored figure who just stares at the sins. Ten minutes later at the boar hat. So that's kinda creepy. Naruto muttered wine sitting next to Elizabeth, who was in a little agreement. Ban, on the other trotter is an even bigger jerk than I thought. Hearing that, 
Naruto just nods in agreement. He is a greedy fox after all. So how are those two, when it comes to them working together, hate or good friends? Naruto asked the leader of the sins. Well, they were always together, but it could be that he was always cleaning up his messes, but they did work together well. Just after saying that, Naruto's eyes widen, and he turns much to Meliodas' surprise to see the look on his face. Something wrong? Meliodas asked Naruto who stood up. Something's happening with Ban. Hearing that it surprised him, since he couldn't sense anything yet followed after him with Dian. Soon enough they were greeted with the sight of Ban fighting against a floating child with a spear, and the fight ended there by Meliodas bopping Ban atop the head to stop him even saying bad ban like he was an animal. With that, the two become in disagreement while Naruto just stares at the child just as Dian arrived. Hey, what's all the ruckus over here? Dian questions the group just as she looks at King and her eyes widen in shock just like Meliodas's. King! The two shout simultaneously, shock ban and Naruto, who thinks back to the picture of King from the posters, then at the one before them. Who the hell designs these wanted posters? Naruto shouts, finding this to be ridiculous and even Ban agrees. How on earth is he the fat ass? Ban demands their leader while pointing at him. Well, maybe he lost a little weight? Meliodas said yet Naruto just shakes his head. Wait, it looks like he aged backwards. Naruto shouts at Meliodas, who places a hand on his chin while the two just stare at their leader in disbelief at how he's not shot, but the moment Dian talked to King, he suddenly floated away from them all while they watched. In no time flat, they were all back at the boar hat with Ban serving food to two kids. Damn, Naruto muttered with Hawk agreeing since the food in the table makes their look like crap. But we don't have any. The kid was cut off by Ban. If you won't eat it, I'll give it all to the pig. Hearing that, the currently drooling hawk started foaming from the mouth, and immediately, they start eating with Naruto forcefully pulling back the tearful hawk. Don't make me suffer, I just want a taste. The tearful pig shouts in hunger, while the kids congratulate him on the food. With that, Ban questioned the two more on the area, it ending with the two disagreeing on if the child was king or not. So you guys are trying to get into the necropolis too? Heading then has surprised them all. That boy from earlier came with questions a few times too. He said he wanted to reach necropolis no matter what. He said he's been looking for a long time too. Hearing that made Naruto suspicious on what was exactly there. It's actually nearby. The entrance to the necropolis is in the hamlet. But it's not a place you can reach just because you want to. Hearing that, Naruto was confused by his words. Is it a grave that's normally hidden or something? Meliodas questioned with confusion, only to be proven wrong by the kid. It's not a grave. They say the necropolis is a land where people go when they die. Hearing that, Naruto was very much surprised at hearing such an answer with the others agreeing. Have you ever been there? Ben questioned the two of them curiously. No. All that stuff is just superstition. The boy said yet the girl spoke with knowledge. Precious memories shared with the dead will guide you to the capital. A traveling man said that to us just before he left, but I can't exactly remember what his name was. I think it may have been Mare something. Hearing that it confused then even more. That tip just laid your meal and then some. Thanks, Elaine. Hearing that, Naruto felt something odd from Ban and just looks at him with his vision getting a little blurry after he saw Ban giving off a light blue aura before it disappears. Twenty minutes later, outside the boar hat. Well this may not be easy, muttered Naruto, who was following after Ban next to Hawk while behind them was Elizabeth and Meliodas as well as Diane, but as they were walking, Naruto was ignoring everything yet felt hatred and anger somewhere around them yet remained on guard but stops behind Ban who stood in the clearing. Naruto just stares at Ban, feeling sadness emanating from him. You okay? Naruto asked the Sin, who looks back at him, just as the two noticed they were surrounded by flowers. When? 
Naruto said with confusion while Diane calls for Elizabeth to come over here when she arrived behind Naruto and Hawk. With that they were all gathered. What kind of flowers are these? Elizabeth asked with wonder yet Hawk just breaths on one, causing all of the flower petals to be blown into the air before they start swirling around them, creating a vortex all the while one kid telling them to be careful. What is this? Naruto shouts and just like that. Not a moment later they all found themselves at an area called the Necropolis, which surrounded them all with large green crystals. Seeing the place, Naruto just looks around with great surprise, as he's never seen an area like it before yet it felt similar to Death's Realm of Limbo. Is this the Necropolis? Naruto asked no one in particular just before Elizabeth spoke. Do you think it was my wish to meet my mother? She asked with wonder just like Hawk who missed his food unlike Meliodas and Diane who drew a blank. What about you Naruto? Meliodas asked to see he had a lost look in his eyes. I think I've been here before. When he said that, Meliodas' eyes just widened when he heard that but his attention was drawn back towards Ban who suddenly dashed off and after him. King too. That's King? said the surprised Meliodas which Elizabeth just agreeing yet curious how he got here. Captain, what do we do? Diane asked while she was looking down at Meliodas. I guess we run after him for now. Meliodas said but just as Naruto was about to take a step forward, he turns fast while having a serious expression upon his face, staring at the direction from behind them all which confuses them. You see something? Meliodas asked just as Naruto points at something causing them all to turn around yet they saw no one that was until a moment later an armored figure appeared. Seeing the figure alerted them all which all the sin of wrath did at first was look at Naruto with great confusion and how he knew the person was there. Oh seems you detected me before I arrived, so you still have that ability. Hearing that, Naruto's eyes widened when he heard that. Wait, still have that, do you know who I am? Naruto questions the armored figure that stood before them all. I'm guessing you're a holy knight, mind telling me what you're after? Meliodas asked the figure yet the moment he did, that was when they all felt the sudden rise of a massive amount of bloodlust. Don't. You dare speak you demon. Hearing that, Meliodas' eyes widened all the way before he took a stance while taking out his broken sword. Hawk, get Elizabeth out of here right now shouts the sin of wrath, and hearing that, the knight grabs the handle of their sword and with it a powerful force slams into them all that starts pushing them back unlike Elizabeth and Hawk who were sent flying back, by thankfully Diane caught them, so she could place them on the ground. Hawk, do as he says. Naruto shouts while looking down at the pig who nods. Will do. Hop on, Elizabeth. The pig asks the princess who listens, and gets in a pig just as he dashed off with Elizabeth. Please, be careful Naruto. The princess asked him which Naruto looks at Meliodas, and his eyes widen to see black markings appearing on his skin, surprising not only him, but Diane as well yet, she just enters a fighting stance just like Naruto. Seeing this, the knight points the sword right at Meliodas. I am the knight of vengeance, in the name of the knights of the round, I will strike you down you accursed demon and then the goddess whore. Hearing that, Naruto's eyes widen as he got this odd feeling yet more so the enemy aims to kill the princess. This guy's power is no joke, if we aren't careful it won't end well at all. Meliodas said, but he then heard Naruto speak. Actually, I think that's a she. Hearing that, Meliodas showed surprise while glancing at Naruto before back at the armored figure. The four didn't move an inch, Naruto with his fists raised just like Diane, while Meliodas had his broken sword in hand. There was only silence until Diane made the first move by pressing her knuckles on the reflective ground just before the ground under Mordred's feet gave way, having her suddenly start sinking in quick sand. Sand whirl. Diane said yet her eyes widened to see Mordred raising her sword up high with one hand. Are you serious? She demands with great annoyance just before blood-red electricity was unleashed from her blade, and with a yell she swung it down on the sand, 
unleashing a powerful shockwave towards the three yet Meliodas just swings his broken sword at the incoming shockwave. Full counter. Meliota shouts just before he reflects the shockwave back at Mordred's position, creating an explosion yet the Sins didn't realize that behind them appeared Mordred by a red flash with her sword drawn back before she suddenly dashes directly for Meliodas. Planning to slash him in half until she finds a leg heading directly for her head before she leans far back in order to dodge it just before jumping back from Meliodas' hell blaze. Once she created some distance, she looks at the one who saw through her attack. She used the explosion as a decoy. Naruto muttered, being the only one to have sensed Mordred's exact position by her killing intent. Yet, while staring at her, he saw a light red glow her body gave off. TCH, so you really do have the N, E, sensing skill, ah great. Mordred muttered just before looking up to see Diane with her right arm drawn back, immediately delivering her strongest punch at Mordred, yet she easily caught it with her left hand. Shocking the giantess just before she found her entire body lifted in the hair by Mordred, who was gripping one of her fingers that were involved in the fist, using that to give her something strong enough to hold onto. Get lost. She shouts just before she throws the giantess far away from the two, showing her monstrous strength just before turning fast to to block a strike from Meliodas who was behind her with his broken blade meeting hers right before watching him point his right hand's index fingers and middle fingers at his sword just as it was engulfed by. Black Flames Divine Slayer Meliota shouts just before he jumps back but quite high in fact, but as he did so, he made eye contact with Naruto. What he did surprised Naruto, since he made a blowing motion with his mouth. Seeing that it caused his eyes to widen while the Sin of Wrath swung his sword and sent the attack straight towards Mordred, but what surprised her was that it passed over her head, quickly turning to see Naruto's right arm drawn back. Typhoon Fist He shouts while he swung his, his fist full force at Mordred just as the attack got in front of him, being hit by the tremendous wind that followed and caused the Black Flames to become a large-scale attack that was heading straight for the wide-eyed Mordred who was then consumed by the massive black flames that then swirl around her. Combined Technique Taipun Hell Prison Naruto shouts with Meliodas unleashing more hell fire into the now sphere-like typhoon of dark green wind, which was mixing with and increasing the black flames, which in turn increases the size of the sphere. During the entire time, Naruto had both of his arms raised with his teeth being gritted while Meliodas was using all the flames he could to cause the most damage to Mordred from within it, but that thought of there it was proven wrong just after they saw blood-red electricity inside it. So fucking tedious. Hearing that, both of their eyes widened just as from the sphere bursts a pillar of light, and with it was Mordred, who had the sword raised with both of her hands. Yet, what was different was the fact her helmet was gone revealing her face and seeing it. Naruto just froze as her face caused him to have a headache and with that, an opening was made. Instead of attacking, Mordred saw this weakness and immediately gets in front of the wide-eyed Naruto so she could deliver a devastating strike to his stomach, sending him to his feet before he falls forwards in the ground with the uninjured Mordred simply looking back at Meliodas with her helmet morphing back on her face. Now you're next. Mordred declares before she disappears by lightning appearing all around Meliodas as after images that were causing him to look around just before turning quickly to find Mordred there with her sword pulled back and swung his black flame sword at her, but she vanished by lightning, causing his eyes to widen just as he was slashed deeply in the back by her sword. So weak. Mordred muttered just before the sin turns fast to deliver a black flame attack, but instead of blocking, she took it full force, while reaching out to grab Meliodas by his hair, pulling him close to her helmet. You're nothing but a worthless piece of crap, you despicable duh. She was cut off by Meliodas swinging his broken sword consumed by black flames against Mordred's neck, but it only was able to leave a crack. Seeing this, her body starts to release a slowly rising blood-red aura. So, damn! Pathetic! Mordred shouts before she drops Meliodas, and not waiting another second, 
She impales him completely with blood being vomited out of Meliodas's mouth before she moves around and pushes the sword deeper through his heart while leaning closer to his ear. I've waited so long to thrust my blade through one of your many hearts, demon. After saying that, she kicks him off of her blade to send him flying back then rolling on the ground until he slams into a crystal before falling forwards in utter pain from the damage he sustained from the attack. Slowly Mordred starts to raise his sword up, planning to obliterate Meliodas. Now, she stops there at seeing a shadow wash over her and looks up to spot Diane closing in fast towards her with her right arm pulled back and before she could raise her sword. Her body's skin became darker, and with that the speed, she was falling greatly increases to the point Mordred found herself beneath a single fist that slams her into the ground, creating a large crater upon impact. Heavy Metal Diane shouts with her fist deep in the ground but before she could pull her hand out, she felt the ground start to shake, and that included her entire arm just before the ground exploded into a wide-range shockwave of lightning that sent Diane flying through the air before she hits the ground. Rolling until she stops at a crystal with her body, and clothing burnt from the close-range explosion of heat and lightning, only able to grunt in pain at her entire body in pain. During the entire ruthless attack, Naruto was watching from where he lay in shock, how Meliodas was stabbed and Diane was sent flying back with injuries littering her body. Damn it. Naruto muttered as he watched Mordred slowly approach Meliodas, who was still laying on the ground, knowing full well that she plans on killing him. Move, move! Naruto thought as he forced his body to stand on one knee, but was weak from the kick to his stomach as well as his stomach burning once again. As it was, he could feel a deep within his heart, emotions. One being happiness at the thought of Meliodas being killed yet the other, was a far greater feeling, an urge to protect the sin who in turn can help protect Elizabeth. Is that your wish? Hearing that, Naruto froze and looks up to see a single glowing entity. Who, he was cut off by the light speaking to him. I see, so you're indeed just like me without realizing it. Hearing that, Naruto's eyes widened in confusion at what he meant, all the while Mordred Wad staring down at Meliodas finally about to kill one of the ones she hates the most. Just Lee, what are you talking about? Naruto demands the light that took form, causing his eyes to widen all the way at the man who stood before him. He was quite tall, but what caught his attention was his silver-gray hair. His body was encased in radiant silver-woven plate armor. His exposing skin was dyed brown as well as his skin composed of dragon scales. Seeing him, Naruto felt his head ache greatly again, but it started to ease as the man spoke. I lived a life, granting wishes from others, from the powerful to the weak, and eventually my own death. Hearing that, Naruto's eyes simply widened when he heard that. I lived as a hero and died as a hero. I have no regrets about that, yet I do have one regret. After saying that, he stares into the boy's wide eyes. That one regret was that I left you all alone. A baby, not knowing who he is nor who his parents are. Hearing that, slowly his eyes widen all the way. You're my. He stops there while staring at the man who gives him a sad smile. I know I have no right as a father, but I cannot rid myself of this single desire the moment you were born. I wanted to at least give you something that can help protect you and the ones you care for. I just wanted to for once experience the pride of being a father. I know it's completely selfish of me to say such a thing after leaving you all alone, but even so. As he said it, he kneels down to place his glowing hand on Naruto's chest all the while Mordred had her back turned to them. Finally, at long last, Mordred muttered before she grabs Meliodas by his hair and lifts his body, so he was now kneeling, unable to fight from his injuries, while not knowing what was happening began Mordred. I needed to do this, for not only myself but for your mother Kushina. After saying that, he pulls his hand away before standing up straight with his body slowly reverting to spirit form. Now, what is it that you wish for? Hearing that, his eyes widened all the way as Elizabeth appeared in his mind. 
Seeing that look, he just smiles before closing his eyes. Then grant it, for you have the power. Naruto Arthurian Pendragon. As he said it, he disappeared with Naruto slowly standing up with a sad expression before he looks down at his hands, feeling as if he was given something that was waiting to be unleashed. Now, I think I can. He stops muttering just before he turns fast towards Mordred, who was already raising her sword. Die! Mordred screamed as she swung the blade down, planning to behead Meliodas, who was about to use his dark power to a far greater extent, but during the milliseconds that passed, Naruto had already moved with every fiber of his being to make it, but as he did so, running towards Meliodas, who was on his knees with a sword heading for his neck, he felt unimaginable pride in who he is. It wasn't just the fact he met his father, but to know what kind of man he was, but more so received something from him that will in turn help grant his wish. Thanks, Dad. As he thought that, he heard a single word or phrase being uttered many times in his head, as if begging to be said, that finally ends when he shouts it at seeing the blade getting closer to Meliodas's neck. Bamun. As he screamed the name, he had already stopped and swung his arms with lights appearing as it was swung through Meliodas' neck before taking physical form, as it was millimeters away from Mordred's own blade. Only a clang sound was heard from a bright light appearing from Naruto's hand, and from under Mordred's sword. What they saw when the light finally dims down was a sword that came into existence, and completely deflects Mordred's blade with sparks flying everywhere. Seeing this, Mordred became very shocked at what she was seeing. Why would you save him? Questioned Mordred, who was in disbelief, yet the young man simply looks to see a two-handed, golden great sword with a blue jewel embedded in the hilt. He only stares at its magnificence with great shock. The blade itself felt very familiar, like there's something in the back of his mind he keeps scratching. With all that, he simply looked at Mordred with eyes that shocked her. It's because, ten codes a true knight, the second code, a knight must always protect the weak and defenseless. Hearing that, Mordred's eyes widen all the way before he pushes her back and raises the sword up high before he swings it down, sending an explosive shockwave of magic at the wide-eyed knight, who deflects it with her own. If that's how you're gonna be, then I'll just knock you out. Mordred shouts with anger while she released a deadly bloodlust from her body. Seeing this, Naruto just looks at the blade with thoughts being heard in his mind and images of how his father used the blade appearing in his mind. His attention on the sword was cut short after Mordred disappeared by red lightning, appearing behind him, and went to ran the back end of her handle in his back when he instantly turned to not only deflect the strike, but also did a roundhouse kick that almost hit the girl, if not for her jumping, but as she did so. She couldn't help but smile since she might not need to hold back since for some reason. As of right now his skill has reached hers. Seems I don't need to hold back anymore. Good. With those words, she speed right for Naruto by red lightning and crashes into him as he deflected her blade while still being pushed back by great speeds right before his back crashed into a large green crystal that instantly had cracks appear all over it before it explodes with the two moving with great speed, both appearing as flashes of red as their blades clashed with one another, with T each stroke causing a small crater to form at their feet. Their clashing of blades ends again, when the two stopped as their blades were pushing against one another with great ferocity, while her red aura clashed with a light blue one. While this was happening, for some reason the bloodlust he's been sending was disappearing, being replaced by a warm and heavenly aura as if she were very happy that they were fighting. Minutes had gone by as their fight continued with neither of them gaining the upper hand, stopping yet again when he strikes connected. Who are you exactly? Naruto demanded the knight who answered. If you come with me, then I'll tell you everything. She told him honestly, without a single lie in her tone, yet he didn't agree at all. Don't think so. Hearing that, he heard chuckle from the knight. It doesn't matter. Even I can tell you're getting weaker while I have yet to unleash the full amount of my magic power. She told Naruto who grits his teeth and knowing she's not lying since he's getting very tried, 
and forcing his body through the aching pain he's been feeling as he fought. Hey, Tin Can! Hearing that, Mordred turns fast to see a giant rock fist heading for her, and from behind it, Diane could be seen which angers her greatly. Why you? Mordred shouts before stopping the fist with her left hand, while her right blocked the sword strike of Naruto's, who was surprised before feel by her magic suddenly spike, and watched her raise the sword that unleashed a pillar of light before she swung it down at Naruto's feet. Creating a massive explosion that sent Naruto flying far while his sword was raised, forced to block and because of it, he was projected high and far into the air. Crap! Naruto shouts as he was sent flying far from the impact of the attack, not able to stop himself while in midair, flying miles and miles away from the battle until he thought of something and quickly created a wind clone that proceeded to throw him down towards the ground. The moment he lands a crater from under his feet right before he crouches and dashes directly back towards the others, uprooting the earth, but even so at the speed he was running, he was truly fast enough to make it as Mordred had turned her sight to Diane who was in the way yet again, protecting Meliodas. Get out of my way! Mordred shouts as she leaped directly for a wide-eyed Diane, while pulling her sword back just as it was consumed by a blood-red aura. With a single yell, she thrusts the sword forwards as it pierced directly through the shocked Diane who didn't know what had happened before she starts stumbling back just as Mordred came right for her face slamming her right fist into the poor giantess and sending her down upon the dirt and crystals, no longer conscious. Seeing that she is no longer moving, Mordred decided to get on top of the giantess, standing above her chest before delivering a devastating kick to her face, having it moved to the side with blood trickling from her mouth and nose. How do you get in my way? She demands the unresponsive and unmoving Diane before raising her right sword planning to end this. Don't even think about it, Meliota shouts, gaining Mordred's attention to see the captain of the sins forcing his body to stand, despite his injuries and glaring at her. It's me you want, isn't it? He demands Mordred, who just stares at him from beneath her helmet. I'm going to make you suffer, like how you and that goddess whore made us suffer. After she said that, she turns to Diane's unconscious face before raising her sword with both hands, just as a large blood-red aura was released from the blade. With that, her helmet starts to open until the magic was suddenly cut off with body of her eyes widening under the helmet before her arm started losing the strength to lift her sword and drops it, having it fall okay the ground with a cling sound being heard before she looks at her arms. What's happening? Why am I? She couldn't finish that sentence after using all her strength to raise both of her arms in order to quickly block a spear slamming into her helmet, leaving cracks just before she was sent flying hard into a crystal and before she could even understand what was happening. Above her appeared many kunai spears that proceeded to slam down upon her, causing an explosion with dust flying everywhere, but it clears to show Mordred whose armor was cracked. The one she found standing before her was a smiling band whose upper clothing was gone to reveal that his body was suddenly more muscular than before as well as holding her sword. King was currently next to Diane. He was drained of his physical abilities, yet he was still looking up at her worriedly with tears in his eyes, while a light green barrier was protecting them. Sorry about that, but I'll be stopping you here. Hearing that, Mordred grits her teeth in anger just before she felt something and turns to see something heading their way. Without another thought she disappears by lightning, surprising Ban just before he saw his hand missing with the sword as well, turning to see that she had backed away from them all in anger due to missing most of her physical abilities, but even so she was still strong. Her gaze shifts over to see Naruto had arrived with sword in hand before thinking about her great loss of stamina from the fighting as well as the missing physical abilities, knowing she can't win with physical abilities. On the end she began to grit her teeth in anger since if she continues holding back her magic, then she won't be able to take Naruto. I'm ending this! Mordred shouts with rage, shocking Naruto, Meliodas, Ban, 
and king at the sudden rise of magic from her body before her helmet recedes with her sword suddenly becoming stained with dark red blood, and with that the blade of the sword was enveloped by a radiance of blood, giving off a strange, violent and furious sound as it begins to transform. Seeing this had shocked all the sins at the massive amount of power, looking directly at King who stood in front of Diane, while a light green barrier was protecting the two as well as healing Diane slowly. Not only that but where Ban stood, he was in front of them. While this was happening, Naruto was about to do something when he heard his name being called and turns to see Miliota's mouthing something while his wounds were healing by the darkness leaking from his body. Behold, Mordred shouts which her sword, Clarence, changes. Its normally pure and beautiful form began to transfigure as the sword became tainted by a sinister and wicked blade befitting a demon, transformed into a grotesque and unsightly form. Red lightning starts two flickers through the surroundings as it is clad in her unimaginable hatred. Slowly, she starts to raise the sword up high while thinking that even if Naruto were to go against her attack, with his current power level, he would survive it. Claret Blood Arthur She screamed before unleashing the blood radiance upon them as a flash of light, becoming a surging wave with the simple purpose of destruction. It released became a straight line of crimson lightning from the tip of her sword, heading directly for the two, but what happened next shocked her completely. All of a sudden, Meliodas appeared between the two sides, right in front of the attack, much to her shock before seeing that Naruto had thrown him. When she looked back, she saw him drawing back his broken sword. Full counter. With those words, he swung the broken sword and the moment it made contact it was reflected back towards the wide-eyed Mordred, who saw it was now even stronger than her own attack, before she goes to guard herself with her helmet retracting as the attack was closing in on her, but just as she was about to try and counter. In front of her appeared something that caused her hope to fill her heart. That, Mordred thought at seeing a light pink seven flower petals barrier shield made from light, taking the form of a seven-layered shield in the shape of an iridescent flower. The moment the blast made contact, a massive shockwave was made as the attack collided with the massive shield, but it wasn't enough because one by one the layers started to be penetrated and destroyed leaving only enough for Mordred to ready her attack as the moment it broke through the final one, she swung down her blade. Claret Blood Ardor. She screamed as a massive explosion took place, sending the earth, crystals, and everything else flying in all directions. As soon as it calms down, the leader of the seven deadly sins immediately approaches the large dust cloud slowly to see what happened to the body, when he stopped in shock at what he saw. Ehihe, that was a good move. Spoke a smiling Mordred who suffered great injuries. Her left arm's armor was destroyed along with the left side of her armor, as well being destroyed. Not only that she has wounds on her body as well as blood yet, she still stood strong. Seeing this, the other sins couldn't believe what they were seeing. Are you kidding me? How is she still alive? King shouts with shock as the other sins were in disbelief at what they saw, not understanding how she could have survived such an attack. I don't get it. The amount of magic she used was doubled by my full counter yet how. Meliodas stops there and turns fast to see the cause of it just like the others who follow his gaze. All seeing that Naruto was standing while he has his left arm extended with his sword vanishing. The expression upon his face was that of confusion. My arm. I had just moved on its own but what did I? He was cut off by all of them hearing Mordred give a small laugh gaining their attention once more to see that big smile. Seems that even if he can't remember who I am he still can't help but protect me, she said truthfully to them all before standing up straight with her sword going over her right shoulder, yet even so she was still exhausted. What a talking about kid, you saying you knew he would protect you? Ben questioned the knight, who runs her left hand through her hair, in order to wipe away the sweat. Of course, him doing so truly proves what we had all hoped. Hearing that, Ban didn't like that how she said made it imply there's more of them. And what may I ask is that, exactly? King questioned the once king who smiles. It's simple actually, 
after all a father tends to act without thinking when protecting their daughter from danger. When those words left her mouth, Meliodas, Ban, and King's eyes widened in shock at what they heard. Daughter, Melodoas thought, his eyes slowly becoming more wide by the second, and it only stops when he turns fast to see the disbelief on Naruto's face while he stares at the girl in front of him. Ever since he saw her face, he kept having this feeling like he had met her before until it finally happened at that very moment. A spark occurred like a lightning bolt of emotions as well as fragments of memories striking through his head, and with it agony, agony like he had never felt before. Roar, ha ha! Naruto screamed in pain as his hands grabbed his head in great pain with his legs failing and falling to his knees. What came after was a single image of a smiling child Mordred being lifted in the air by someone. Higher, Papa, higher. What? Is this memory? When Naruto asked himself that, but in the end, he yells again in pain before falling to his side and curling into a ball, unable to make out the fragments as it was more pain and voices than memories. Watching this scene was Meliodas, who could see that his mind was under great stress and agony, but with it, he saw a completely gray memory that showed a kid Mash holding a wooden sword in hand. Mash, let's call it for today since you look exhausted. I want to keep training, my king. Ma. Please, sir, I want to get stronger so I can fight by your side. Fine, but don't overdo it, okay? While this was happening, Mordred had her eyes set on Naruto, who could no longer protect himself or resist. Immediately, she points her sword at them all with clear determination in her eyes. I'm taking back my father from you villains, no matter what. As soon as she shouts that, her eyes widen and looks in one direction with anger, as if she heard something. What? But J.E.? She was silenced there before looking at her feet with intense rage before she turns fast and starts running away in retreat as her orders say. Seeing this, Bam was about to give chase when two arrows flew into his legs, surprising the scent of greed before they looked to see someone on a large green crystal, taking aim. She wore a beautiful green clothing, clad in verdant green with her cold, sharp eyes containing a beastly glint. Her hair is stretched out long and unkempt and it is completely lacking in silkiness. What was very noticeable was her animal ears, as well as her tail. Atlanta, Knight of the Round Table slash Magic 2748 Strength 1759 Spirit 1738 Total 6245 Don't even move Sinov. She couldn't finish that sentence due to being unable to find the words after she spots Naruto, who at the time was holding his head in pain, but that didn't stop him to see who the new arrival was but the moment he saw the newcomer, made eye contact with her, he was hit with many more memories. One being of himself standing next to the archer and helping her train in archery by steadying her aim. Come on, Kitty, you need to stay perfectly still. Your Majesty, my name is Atlanta, and if you continue to address me as Kitty, then I'll be forced to report this as sexual harassment to your wife. Seriously, Atlanta, we were friends for years, so why you gotta pull out the harassment card already? Weren't you the one wanting scratches behind the ears when you got drunk that one night? That was because of alcohol that bitch served. I mean, really. She talked about it being so high class that only the one she deems worthy can drink it. She purposely gave me that wine to get me drunk. With that memory, Naruto could only roll on the ground as he was gripping his head tightly while his stomach's tattoo was glowing immensely. Seeing him, the archer could only stare at him before she got at her teeth and forces herself to look away right as she retreated. Seeing this, Bam was about to move after them when he felt something from his wounds and hits the ground, unable to move from being paralyzed. Seeing this, Meliodas just looks back at the in pain Naruto before running over to him, looking down to see he was in an incredible amount of pain and appearing as he lost consciousness, appearing as he's stuck in a nightmare with pain evident on his face. What do I do? Meliodas asked himself, not knowing what he can do to ease Naruto's pain as it's obvious his memories 
of what could be seen as the past and the present are clashing with each other and causing much pain. Um, Captain, I can't really move, Ben said to Meliodas, who looks to see the two knights of the round were now gone. He, hearing that, the captain of the seven deadly sins head shifts back to see Hawk running towards them with Elizabeth on top of him. Wow, you guys are really going at it, Hawk said with a worried Elizabeth speaking to them. You guys aren't hurt, are you? She stops there the moment she spots Naruto, who was laying on the ground with a look of pain on his face. The moment Hawk had stopped did the princess immediately get off him to run to Naruto, kneeling down, so she could then have him sit up by wrapping her arms around him. Naruto, please open your eyes. Elizabeth begged yet, he was unresponsive to her words, still appearing in a lot of pain with sweat dripping from his face before she turns to a wide-eyed Meliodas. Sir Meliodas, what happened to Naruto? He looks like he's in a lot of pain, and he won't wake up. She questioned the captain who had an uncomfortable look upon his face, as he didn't know how to answer, but he didn't need to when he and Elizabeth had noticed that Naruto had begun to calm down. Seeing this also caused Elizabeth to relax somewhat as she just held him closely yet still worried, not noticing the look on Meliodas's face as he stared at the two. But my love for her, I know it can never happen. Not only have I made her worry for me nonstop, but I still fail in protecting her. If it weren't for you, she would have been killed twice. That is why, I am truly unworthy of such a lady as Princess Elizabeth. Remembering his words, he just looked away and back at the direction where the two knights of the round had fled. It took everything we had to fight Mordred. This isn't good, as we are now, if they all decided to attack at the same time we won't have a chance. He thought, not liking the future where they have to fight them, since it appears it will be dinner than later. What's going on? Hearing that, Meliodas looks to see Elizabeth's body had started to disintegrate by particles of light like Naruto's, as well as the others. You guys don't belong here, in the necropolis. So now it's pushing you all out. When they had heard that, they all turned to see the two kids they helped out earlier. That was great. You met the person you hoped to see. The older brother said with a smile, like his sister to the surprised Ban. What are the two of you going here? Ban questioned them, not knowing why they are suddenly here. Wait, are you two from here this whole time? Once asked, the young sister nods in confirmation. Your cooking was really yummy, thank you, the girl said, gaining a smile from the sin of greed. Sure thing. After saying that, he looks at the smiling Elizabeth. I'm glad I got to see you, Ban, she said to her love who responds. Later, Elaine. He said to her before they had all vanished before King could tell her anything, leaving Elaine and the two spirits by themselves. That was interesting. Hearing that, Elaine turns fast to find Death standing there with a cane and glowing red eyes. Seeing him had shocked her, but his appearance. She didn't like where this was going but what happened next caused not only her, but the kids to sweat drop as well. His form shifted and transformed to that of a chibi version of himself. I believe this form makes you all feel more at ease. Now children, it's about time I remove you two from limbo since you two go a date with heaven. He told the two of them, surprising the kids, but even so the big brother got in front of the little sister as he was glaring at him. Who are you? The boy demands the being who tilts his head. I'm death. Hearing that it caused the boy to start shaking, until she felt a hand on his shoulder and turns to see a smiling Elaine. It's okay, he won't do anything to you but lead you to where you need to go. She told the two of them reassuringly which the two just turned to see him move aside, relaying a golden door that opens up to reveal a golden light. If you would please? With those words, slowly the two made their way towards the door before they started hearing voices of past loved ones, which their eyes widen as tears appear in their eyes before they quickly run through with the door shutting. After that, he looks at the fairy. You know you can still go too? When he asked her that, she just looks away and shows she's not ready to move on yet, 
which he simply nods before reverting back to his previous form. Fine, I'll be leaving now since I've got a little business to attend to. Once that was said, behind him appears a black and white door that he immediately opens up with both of his hands, reversing purgatory. I need to have a little chat with an old acquaintance. After he said that, before he enters, he glances to his left to see that a blonde-haired woman wearing a blue dress with armor was watching the entire scene before she vanished, and with that he enters purgatory, with the door closing behind him. That very night, in the guest room. Slowly, Naruto's eyes began to open, and once again, he found himself in the guest room, having been unconscious for a few hours. Finally up, hearing that, he slowly raised his body just as his left hand touched his head to feel the after effects of what happened before looking up to see Meliodo standing at the doorway with his arms crossed. He showed a smile yet his eyes appeared to show he was bothered in a way. Yeah, right now I only have a headache. Just after saying that, Meliodas appeared to be somewhat relieved before he turns his back to him, heading towards the door. You should get some rest, it's the best way to get rid of. He was cut off by Naruto suddenly speaking. Meliodas, hearing that, the captain of the sins just looks back at Naruto to see him showing an expression of confusion yet also one that needs answers. I want you to be completely honest with me, who are you exactly? When he asked that sudden question, Meliodas just stares at him with a little surprise yet instead of answering he simply places his hands behind his back, revealing a nonchalant expression in his face. Meliodas, Captain of the Seven Deadly Sins. If that's all, then, what Naruto said next caused him to freeze. There's some things I want to say, one being I met two beings imprisoned inside my consciousness, more so it appears to me they know you, and despise you among all else. I don't understand but I saw images of you, yet you looked evil and cruel. With those words, he didn't see Meliodas' eyes slowly widening all the way and avoided his gaze. They seem to be talking about some woman, blaming you because you stole her from them. Who is this person they speak of? Moreover, these beings are inside of me. That means it has something to do with me and why I was found in the forest. Not only that, the ones that attacked us. I was hit by these visions, fractured memories of sorts. Not only that, that woman, Mordred, I know for a fact she wasn't lying when she said I was her father not to mention how I reacted without realizing it to protect her. I felt the urge to keep her out of harm's way. So please, tell me everything you know about what's going on. He asked the sin who turned around, not showing him his very depressed expression upon his face. Die Melodoa slash Naruto. As he remembered the last memory, he just grits his teeth before answering. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. When Naruto heard that, his eyes widened in shock, but then he shows great anger towards Meliodas and his unwillingness. Why, what the hell are you hiding from me, Meliodas? Naruto said, as he grits his teeth even more. I, just, he was cut off by Naruto who's begun shouting at him. Just what? What is so bad about telling me who I am? The ones that attack us, their main mission was my capture. They know who I am, and they know who you are so tell me now. He demands the sin, but when he turns around, he was met with a very sad expression. If I told you, the seal might become even more damaged, and if that happens. Hearing that, his eyes widened since death mentioned the seal as well. Please, I'll tell you everything, but not now. After we save the kingdom from the holy knights, after that. I'll tell you, but for Elizabeth's sake, could your questions wait just a little longer? With those words, Naruto just stares at the sin of wrath before he sighs out loud and lays back in bed. Fine, but when we do talk, I want to know everything. Who I am and you you are? Hearing that, Meliodas just turns away and stops at the door. Okay. With that said, he leaves the room and starts walking down the steps. How dare you? If it weren't for you, the second king of Camelot would not have fallen. 
Meliodas just stares down in utter sadness at being the main cause for the Knights of the Round to hate him, but immediately he shows a brightened expression when he saw a worried Elizabeth exiting her room to stand in the steps, looking up at Meliodas with worry. He's Awa. He couldn't finish that sentence when Elizabeth showed a brightened expression filled with happen before she ran up the steps past the sin, who just looks down sadly. Well, isn't this what they call jealousy? He said with a depressed smile, but continued walking down the steps in silence. At the meeting place within a dark cave. But Mordred could not finish after receiving a hard slap by a single figure hidden by darkness. You defied my orders, and now they know we are after Naruto, all because you lack patience. Hearing that, Mordred grits her teeth in anger. Patience? We had to go into slumber after what happened to our kingdom. My father, your childhood friend, was a hero like no other. That goddess whore corrupted him. She made him lose what made him our king. She screamed at the figure in anger, showing hatred upon her face as she watched the shadow figure turn away from her. Even so, we still have our mission, and it cannot go off course. Our main priorities is one, Naruto's capture, and to return him to how he once was, two, the death of the two who corrupted him, and three, preventing the resurrection of the demon clan and the destruction of the remnants of the goddess clan, so both will never again enter our world. We are just letting that fool Hendrickson hold onto the seal. After all, as a druid, he is best at tracking the pieces while we ourselves will take the dragon key and get rid of Elizabeth's body, she said before walking away from the angered Mordred, who only looks down with detest. Isn't that just a pathetic sight to behold? Hearing that, Mordred turns fast in anger to see a chuckling woman, who wore a black dress and possessed almost snow-white skin with her long hair also being black in color. Shut it, you Samiramis, you witch. Just like your husband, you hold many secrets from us. Hearing that, she showed some annoyance when referred by that word, but before the two continue, they were stopped by a large figure standing between them, wearing his cloak and in silence. Seeing him, the two just look away in annoyance at him getting involved. Ah ha 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 Come on, sis, you gotta chill. Hearing that, Mordred turns back in annoyance to spot her younger brother Alexander standing behind her with Vlad. The If you interfere, I'll make you regret it. She threatened her brother who raised his arms in defense while taking steps back. Damn, sis, you scary. The boy said uncomfortably before they heard a laugh and turned to see Achilles standing next to Atlanta. Seems you're having fun spoke the smiling Achilles, who kept glancing back at Atlanta, who appeared to be bothered by seeing it was truly Naruto before speaking up. I agree with Mordred. With me, there we had the upper hand. We could have. She couldn't finish that sentence after the shadowed figure appearing in front of her with an annoyed expression. The shadows crept off the person's face and body to reveal a woman and unlike Atlanta, she possessed long platinum blonde hair that reached her back while sporting armor yet, what was very noticeable was the fact her bus size alone was bigger than both women. Her eyes were golden in color in ways yet showed anger despite their beauty. Her main clothing was a battle dress with armor woven as well as wire gauntlets. That is enough, I'm not in the mood to hear your disagreement. Hearing that, she could only listen as they understood which Atlanta starts walking away. If it was an order by the king's most faithful friend, then how can I object? But I'm curious, if the king remembers who he is then how will he react when he sees you as you are right now, Alter Jean? Hearing that, she merely turns away. I do not know truly no, but since we were raised in the same house of God as friends and orphans, I can see he will not be pleased at seeing. I have changed. After saying that, she starts walking away while the others just stare at her back. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So quickly like this video for second part of the series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go. Bye.